Hey guys, welcome to video 18. I've been working away on the bike a little bit. Um, I have the fuel tank dressed. So what I did was, uh, this is Wednesday night. The last video, uh, number 17, was on Monday night. So I don't know if you can see, but it's leaking all from that seal. So I haven't said anything about those people that sold me this. Um, this will be fixed 100% before it leaves. Now, between Monday night and tonight, it's had fuel in it. Um, the, the fuel tank itself seems to be holding up okay, but look at that. <clears throat> how, how are you supposed to race with that? How are you supposed to ride with that? Um, I don't know what the heck these guys were thinking, but I, I'm just... I, I cannot in good conscience let that kind of product go. Um, the problem I have, I do have another tank that I can put on, but the only thing is, is that I've already modified this one in here and up, up around here. So I can't, God dang it all. Hey guys, uh, so just pulling apart the bottom of the fuel tank again. Uh, reason being is that <clears throat> if you watch my earlier videos, I've got uh, a problem with the sealant that they use. Uh, if you go into Permatex or Loctite or any of the other uh, um, gasket makers websites, you'll see that uh, like for RTV silicone and things like that, you'll see that uh, most of this stuff is not fuel safe. So what happens is, is that if you just go to throw it in your, like throw, put fuel into your uh, system and ride the bike and then take the fuel back out of the system, which is what a lot of bikes, a lot of race bikes do, um, then you're fine. Oops. Um, now you can watch lots of videos on these guys on how they go together and come apart. Um, it's pretty simple. Um, I've replaced the fuel filter on this one already. You'll see that the fuel filter is, whoops, there we go. Um, sorry, you'll see the fuel filter is already changing color a bit. Uh, that's right here. You'll see when they're brand new, they come out, they go in clear. Um, they're a charcoal filter, so they'll go black very quickly. Um, that's nothing to worry about. It's just, it is the way it is. Um, so don't worry about it. If you take it out uh, before your prescribed change or at your prescribed change and you see a black filter, it's just the normal color of it. Um, so this is the fuel plate that um, those lovely people, oops, um, lovely people provided. It's a little bit frustrating that uh, I'm having to do this again. Um, oops, I am just not getting the right size today. I don't know what I'm doing, but there we go. It's, oof. okay, that's why. I don't know what they use for a, a bolt head, but that's actually an 18 millimeter. So if you don't have an 18 millimeter um, for some of these banjo bolts, you'll have to get a hold of the, a tool truck, whether it be the, you know, Snap-on or Mac or Matco. Um, I think there's some others in the States that we don't have. Um, yeah, I'll show you guys something in a minute. Now, I am using uh, my Snap-on uh, Impact to remove things. I, I just do it for speed's sake. It's not really one thing is better. Um, 
please don't give me flack about using a an impact. Um, it is for removal, so it's more about the, the speed of the, speed of taking it apart than it is about the uh, the actual tool that I'm using. So, uh, I can see I got a little bit of cleaning to do here. By little, I mean a lot. Look at that. Okay, so this is the rubber gasket that they're using. Look at what happened to this. I can't even tell what's gasket and what's not. Um, wow. <laughs> um, look at that. It's reacted with this so much so that and there's actually another huh um, I don't know what's going on here I don't know if you can see it in the video but it's got a big concave section to it um, normally that wouldn't be a problem other than you've got fuel coming through here if there wasn't uh, if it was just the um, just the ability to um, um, to hold the fuel pump in place that wouldn't be too bad but this whole thing is all distorted um, this is the first time I've taken this apart I've been I'll be honest I've been avoiding taking it apart simply for this reason I didn't I kind of didn't want to know what was there if you've been following along I've been peeling this crap out of here for quite a while I, I should have, my mistake, I should have taken this apart a long time ago. Um, this is just crazy. Um, and before you freak out about me using a scraper on aluminum, this is a plastic scraper. So it's, um, it's not harming the aluminum in any way. Um, plastic scrapers are great. But remember, they are disposable. You can only sharpen them so many times. Whoops, going the wrong way. So there we go. You can see all the crap that I pulled out of that. Um, there's no way that that's fuel safe. You should smell it. It just smells disgusting. Um, it's the money, money, a smell of money wasted. Is really what the smell is. Um, Okay, I'll be right back. Hey there, fellow travelers. Um, so, after cleaning all this up, uh, this is the gasket that was in there. Um, this is the uh, uh, the plate that was in there. Um, when they built this, you can see, I don't know if you can see, but there are some of these are through holes and such. This one is a little bit off. Um, this one, I don't know if you can see, but I actually, I should have blued it, but I marked it where there's another hole that uh, is in the bottom of the tank. The, uh, this tank, uh, the base of it, uh, I should grab the other one. This is the, the first tank that I got, and it's got this, I believe it's fuel safe sealant. We'll see, I've, I've kind of spread fuel on it and it was okay. Um, it, it looks like Moto Seal, which is from Permatex, which is the only fuel safe sealant I could find um, that, uh, that is like a silicone type arrangement. Um, sorry, this has got a lot of white powder on it because I had to modify the, uh, the side. There's a little bit of a divot here. Um, I'm gonna have to fill that in with some, some more. I've got some more, uh, a white urethane stick that's coming um, so I can fill that in a bit uh, same with up there just to make that nice and solid uh, this is what basically this line sorry this line went almost straight and I had to reform this to get it around the fan I think that's because it's made for an RX which um, or actually an X or an R um, definitely not the L because the L has a factory fan and this would fit perfectly if I took the fan off um, so but I'm not going to do that and also here because the uh, the L's rads are taller this doesn't fit so 
Again, these tanks are not made for an L. If you're gonna get them, you're gonna have to get them to fit yourself. So um, don't ask us, we're not helping. Um, again, they did the same kind of thing uh, as the previous one. This one, and uh, this bolt and this bolt are regular Allen heads. They should be button heads because the button heads have a lower profile and will allow the clamping to, to happen. Um, I'm also gonna have to clean out in here a bit to make sure that the O-ring seals completely on the fuel pump. Um, but that's, it's hard to tell, but where the fuel leak was actually coming from was in this area right here and around here, because this, there is no joint between the tank and this fitting. On the other side, uh, what they did, you know, was uh, they actually embedded the fitting just like they do these guys. They just embedded a bigger version in the bottom uh, on the right side tank so this would go in. Because of the fuel pump mount, they couldn't do that unless, uh, you know, I suppose they could if they had re-engineered it a bit, but um, I think they wanted to keep this plate as big as possible for the, uh, for the strength of it all. Um, funny thing is, is that there's more bolt holes built into the bottom, like there's another one for here that, like there, there's, they actually have three, this one, this one, and this one, that go around the, uh, that go right through into the tank. There's actually two more. There's one over here and one, one right here. So, it uh, is what it is. We'll try to get it to fit. If, if this tank does not work, um, I think I'm to the point where I'm just gonna have to bite the bullet and uh, and get rid of these tanks completely. Um, really pisses me off because I spent a lot of money on the graphics from Lime 9 and and uh, I think if you've been watching this series for a while, you know how, how long it's taken me to get to this point. Um, but uh, this is kind of the last kick of the can. So um, without any further ado, I'm gonna put you on pause and we'll be back when everything is mounted and we have fuel in it. Okay, so the tanks are back on again. Um, so down here, all this seems to be nice and dry. Uh, the, uh, the Getting the O-ring in took a little bit of work. It was oiling it um, to, to get it in place, which I don't mind. It's a nice snug fit. It should stay there. Um, spring washers are working good in there. Uh, there you can see the tank finally installed. And the last thing I was talking about was I said I was gonna get rid of the rib nuts there, which I did. So this was the the proof of concept. It was just, you know, let's hog out a chunk of aluminum, throw it in there and see what, uh, see to make it work. And it works actually quite well. So everything sits flush. So this is the finished product. Um, finished for a manual lathe. I'm probably gonna remake this once I get to, uh, my little Bantam uh, CNC up and running because this is small enough I can make a piece like that. So that fits in there. Um, this one is the, the one that holds it on to the, uh, uh, onto the bracket. The reason I've uh, countersunk it so much is that, uh, well, one, I made a mistake when countersinking that. I went too far and uh, I figured it's good to get that, that one all sucked up in there anyway. So that's where that guy fits. And uh, that's about it for now. Um, next time we're actually gonna go ahead. I think I'm actually done with the bottom end. I'm gonna, um, I think that's it. Like I say, with the, the bottom of the bike, I think the tanks are ready for testing. About the only other thing is you can see, I don't know if you can see there, there's a, a mark where the, uh, where the back corners of the skid plate actually press up against the tank. Now, I'm hoping with a bit of riding that everything settles in. So I'm gonna keep an eye on that for the first couple rides. Uh, we're, we're going through a nice cold snap right now. So it won't be going out on the road today, but it should be going out in the next few days. Next one, we should see a little bit of a difference in how the bike looks. So until next time, thanks for watching. Um, don't forget to share this with your friends and like it and all that other fun stuff and uh, we shall see you next time okay one last little thing before we go today I just started doing the graphics so I'm just trying to 
Set that down so you can see it. There you go. Traditional Honda Mugen colors. Um, some of the people that have helped us out as well. We've got Repsol uh, Fastway, well, Rep, Repsol through uh, Invitation Thibault. Um, Fastway, Guernet, Scott, Polysport, Baja Designs, and of course ProGrip, that would be the, the um, handle grips I'll be running as the ProGrip rallies. So, and uh, I'm pretty happy with how that's turning out. Um, we'll see you next time.